Hi everybody, today's video of mine is about tonsillitis which is a very important topic because this is a very very common illness especially in children. Tonsillitis is inflammation of the tonsils, two oval shaped pads of tissue at the back of the throat, one tonsil on each side. Signs and symptoms of tonsillitis include swollen tonsils, sore throat, difficulty swallowing and tender lymph nodes on the sides of the neck. Most cases of tonsillitis are caused by infection with a common virus but bacterial infection also may cause tonsillitis. Because appropriate treatment for tonsillitis depends upon the cause, it's important to get a prompt and accurate diagnosis. Surgery to remove tonsillitis once a common procedure to treat tonsillitis is usually performed only when bacterial tonsillitis occurs frequently or it does not respond to other treatments or causes serious complications. Now let me tell you the symptoms. Tonsillitis most commonly affects children between preschool ages and the mid-teenage years. Common signs and symptoms of tonsillitis include red swollen tonsils, white or yellow coating or patches on the tonsils, sore throat, difficult or painful swelling, fever, and large and tender glands that, the, uh, which are lymph nodes in the neck, a scratchy muffled or thro throaty voice, bad breath, stomach ache particularly in younger children, stiff neck and headache. In young children who are unable to describe how they feel, signs of tonsillitis may include drooling due to difficult or painful swallowing, refusal to eat or unusual fussiness. It is important to get an accurate diagnosis if your child has symptoms that may indicate tonsillitis. You should call your doctor if your child is experiencing a sore throat that does not go away within 24 to 48 hours or is suffering, he or she is suffering from painful or difficult swallowing or if there is extreme weakness, fatigue or fussiness. You should get immediate care if your child has uh, any of the, these symptoms which I am going to tell you now. If uh, there is a difficulty in breathing, if there is extreme difficulty in swelling or drooling. Coming to the causes of tonsillitis, this is the mo most often caused by common viruses, but bacterial infection can also be the cause. The most common bacterium causing tonsillitis is Streptococcus pyogenes, which is also no known as Gruppe Streptococcus. The, this is the bacterium that causes strep throat. Other strains of strep and other bacteria also may cause tonsillitis. The tonsils are the immune system's first line of defense against bacteria and viruses that enter your mouth. This, in, um, uh, this function may make the tonsils particularly vulnerable to infection and inflammation. However, the tonsils immune system functions decline after puberty, which is a factor that may account for the rare cases of tonsillitis in adults. Now let me tell you the risk factors. These risk factors for tonsillitis include young age. Tonsillitis most often occurs in children but rarely in those younger than age 2. Tonsillitis caused by bacteria is most common in children ages 5 to 15, while viral tonsillitis is more common in younger children. Uh, uh, frequent exposure to junk. School age children are in close contact with their peers and frequently exposed to viruses or bacteria that can cause tonsillitis. Coming to the complications. Inflama inflammation or swelling of the tonsil from frequent or ongoing uh, tonsillitis, which is chronic, can cause complications such as breathing difficulty, disrupted breathing during sleep, which is known as obstructive sleep apnea, Infection that spreads deep into surrounding tissue, that is tonsillar cellulitis, or infection that results in a collection of pus behind a tonsil, which is known as peritonsillar abscess. So these are the complications of tonsillitis. If tonsillitis caused by group A streptococcus or another strain of streptococcal bacteria is not treated or if antibiotic treatment is incomplete, your child has an increased risk of rare disorders such as rheumatic fever. So this is a very important thing to note that uh, there are two rare, uh, diseases which are although rare but they are uh, dangerous. So you should, uh, if your child is suffering from bacterial tonsillitis, uh, he or she should be treated properly. Okay. These complications include rheumatic fever uh, which is an inflammatory disorder that affects the heart, joints and other tissues. Or uh, there, there may be uh, a complication of post streptococcal glomerulonephritis which is an inflammatory disorder of the kidney that results in inadequate removal of waste and excess fluid from blood. Coming to the preventions. 
the germ that cause viral and bacterial transmitters are contagious therefore the best prevention is to practice good hygiene you should teach your child to wash his or her hands thoroughly and frequently especially after you after using the toilet and before eating you should avoid sharing food drinking glasses water bottles or utensils replace his or her toothbrush after being diagnosed with tonsillitis to help your child prevent the spread of a bacterial or viral infection to others keep your child at home when he or she is ill ask your doctor when it is all right for your child to return to school teach your child to cough or sneeze into a tissue or when necessary into his or her elbow teach your child to wash his or her hands after sneezing or coughing now let's uh, discuss the diagnosis uh, of tonsillitis uh, when the pa- uh, ch- uh, pa- parents bring their children to us we start with a physical exam that usually includes using a lighted instrument to look at your child throat and likely his or her ears and nose which may also be the sites of infection checking for a rash known as scarlatina which is associated with some cases of streptococcal throat infection gently feeling uh, which is known as palpating your child neck to check for swollen glands which are lymph nodes listening to his or her breathing with a stethoscope checking for enlargement of the spleen for concentration of uh, mononucleus which also inflame inflame the tonsils i mean there is uh, another illness which is infectious mononucleus and that can also lead to tonsillitis uh also we we'll, uh, also we can take throat throat swab which is a very simple test uh usually the doctor rubs the sterile swab over the back of your child's throat to get a sample of secretion the sample will be checked in the clinic or in a lab for streptococcal bacteria many clinics are equipped with a lab that can get a test result within a few minutes however a second more reliable test is usually sent out to a lab that can return results within 24 to 48 hours If the rapid in clinic test comes back positive then your child almost certainly has a bacterial infection if the test comes back negative then your child likely has a viral infection your doctor will wait however for the more reliable out of clinic lab test to deter- deter- determine the cause of infection also we may order a complete blood count test uh, with uh, which is also known as cbc with a small sample of your child blood the result of this test which can often be completed in a clinic produces a count of the different types of blood cells the profile of what's elevated what's normal or what's below normal can indicate whether an infection is more likely caused by bacterial or viral agent a cbc is not often needed to diagnose streptococcal throat uh, however if the strep throat lab test is negative the cbc may be needed to help determine the cause of tonsillitis now coming to the treatment first of all i'll discuss at home care whether tonsillitis is caused by a viral or bacterial infection at home care strategies can make your child more comfortable and promote better recovery if a virus is the expected cause of tonsillitis the strategy which i'm going to tell you are the only treatment uh, your doctor won't prescribe antibiotics in case of viral infection your child need, your child will likely be better within 7 to 10 days at home care strategies to use during the recovery time include uh, these measures first of all you should encourage rest encourage your child to get plenty of sleep you should provide adequate fluids give your child plenty of water to keep his or her throat moist and prevent dehydration you should provide comforting foods and beverage warm liquid broth caffeine free tea or warm water with honey and cold treats like ice pops can soothe a sore throat prepare a salt water gargle if your child can gargle a salt water gargle of 1 teaspoon that is 5 ml of table salt to 8 ounces that is 237 ml of warm water can help soothe a sore throat have your child gargle the solution and then spit it out humidify the air use a cool air humidifier to eliminate dry air that may further irritate a sore throat or sit with your child for several minutes in a steamy bathroom offer lozenges lozenges children older than age 4 can suck and suck on lozenges to relieve a sore throat avoid irritants keep your home free from cigarette smoke and cleaning products that can irritate the throat treat pain and fever you should talk to your doctor about using ibuprofen or acetaminophen 
to minimize throat pain and control a fever. Low fever without pain do not require treatment. Except for certain diseases, children and teenagers should not take aspirin because when used to treat symptoms of cold or flu-like illness, it has been linked to rice syndrome, which is a rare but potentially life-threatening condition. Coming to the antibiotics, if tonsillitis is caused by bacterial infection, your doctor will prescribe a course of antibiotics. Penicillin taken by mouth for 10 days is the most common antibiotic treatment prescribed for tonsillitis caused by Group A streptococcus. If your child is allergic to penicillin, your doctor will prescribe an alternative antibiotic. Your child must take the full course of antibiotic as prescribed even if the symptoms go away completely. Failure to take all of the medication as directed may result in the infection worsening or spreading to other parts of the body. Not completing the full course of antibiotics can in particular increase your child's risk of rheumatic fever and serious kidney infl inflammation as I told you before. You should talk to your doctor or pharmacist about what to do if you forget to give your child a dose. Coming to the surgery. Surgery to remove tonsil tonsil tonsils which is known as tonsillectomy may be used to treat frequently recurring tonsillitis, chronic tonsillitis or bacterial tonsillitis that does not respond to antibiotic treatment. Frequent tonsillitis is generally defined as more than 7 episodes in one year, more than 4 to 5 episodes a year in each of the preceding 2 years, more than 3 episodes a year in each of the preceding 3 years. A tonsillectomy may also be performed if tonsil of tonsillitis results in difficult to manage complications such as obstructive sleep apnea, breathing difficulty, swelling difficulty, especially, especially meats and other chunky foods or an abscess, abscess that does not improve with antibiotic treatment. Tonsillectomy is usually done as an outpatient procedure unless your child is very young, has a complex medical condition or if complications arise during surgery. That means your child should be able to go home the day of surgery. A complete recovery usually takes 7 to 14 days. Well, I hope you like this video of mine. If your child is suffering from tonsillitis, Please comment about the child's condition and I'll try to reply to your comment as soon as possible. And uh, till now if you have not subscribed my channel please subscribe it and click the bell icon so that all upcoming videos are delivered to your inbox straight away. And if you think that my video provides some sort of benefit to you and your family please uh, like the videos and share these videos uh, through social media.